Hello there, welcome back to my shed in Brittany. Uh, it's February the 9th, 2015. We've just uh, had a little bit of winter, a little bit of snow, not much, but generally miserable cold. It's now co been cold and clear, which is just lovely. So um, I've been spending some of my time in the shed here, just knocking out a few things, making up some nukes, uh, that's nucleus colony boxes, and also some mini mating nuke boxes. So, let me start off by showing you what a nucleus box looks like. If you don't know already, and you probably do, this is the size of my Dadont uh, nucleus boxes. And we've got standard size Dadont frames, okay, that just fit in there. I make five frame nuke boxes, and if you want to look for the dimensions and how to make them all on my blog, but that is a standard size. So, as well as having normal size nukes, I've also made some mini mating nukes and here's one here and uh, you can see there I've got two entrances one each end so obviously the mating nuke is divided in the middle I'll do this I'll put this on its side so I can just show you so the thing here to do is use your resources wisely and use what you have so what I've done is you can see I've divided my nuke box into two and I've got a partition down the middle so I've got these lovely little frames that I've cut down from the existing frames and uh, hopefully I can populate these mini nukes both sides with bees from uh, one of my main one of my uh, nucleus boxes and how I'll do that is in the spring I'll add a super to my nuke boxes and I'll then insert this in and basically this is two frames from the uh, from the mini mating nukes. Um, there's a chance they'll probably build a bit in here but that's one of the downfalls. There's no other way I can think of doing this system other than doing this at the moment. So once I've populated my frames I can then harvest them and then put them back in my mini mating nukes here. Now obviously there's two sides and ideally when I'm populating these mini, mate, mini mating nukes with bees I'm looking for a frame that's partially drawn up that's got some honey and that will go on this frame number one. And I'll be looking for some brood in the next two frames, then a partial brood and then maybe just a frame of foundation. So that will make an ideal uh, colony without a queen for a mini mating nuke. Now if I don't have enough bees and they haven't drawn it up that well and the weather's not very good, I can also add bees to here. And I can get bees from my other nucleus colonies. but I might be able to take a little bit of resources from my production colonies but what I've got to watch is I don't dent those uh, because I want them for my honey production and it's really important that we remain sustainable as much as possible but at the end of the day you've got to do what you've got to do you can only take so much from different small colonies and if they're not built up they're not built up you just have to wait but anyway I can add some bees to this and then when I've done that I can then put the lid on move them either three kilometers away and then obviously open them up so that um, the bees can fly and at the same time I'll give them a queen the next day probably uh, and that'll be a queen cell. Uh, eventually I hope to have enough of these so I can um, populate nucleus boxes, full size nucleus boxes with, uh, that are loaded with two or three frames of brood and bees and then give them a queen that's been mated in this one. So it's all about utilising what you've got. I've tried to make up um, using standard size stuff so, and in the end of the day, if I find this doesn't work, I can whip out this middle partition and also, uh, and then reuse this as a nucleus box. So, I'm not committing myself. The problem is my funding is not, uh, is not as much as I'd like and I would like to be able to afford 100 of these, but obviously you've got you to do what you can. While I'm here, I'll just show you the inside. I'll take these frames out. I don't know if you can see down there, but what I've got is um, I've actually made this a little ventilated base as well. Uh, it will theoretically help against varroa mite and um, it will also keep the bees or the colony a bit cooler. Uh, I put that in, another reason is because if the bees do get hot and I don't harvest this queen or harvest the colony uh, in time, I'm hoping that that might buy me a little bit of time because the extra ventilation in the base will allow it. Also, <laughs> excuse me, this colony is actually slightly bigger than a lot of people's mating nukes they, they use. Some people use really small ones. And uh, I've got one here. This is um, a little polystyrene one that you can just have a quick look at. 
So there you go, we, you put your um, sugar in that, and that ends here. And you've got these little frames that you put in, and then you put some bee, a couple of bees in, give them a queen, and hopefully end up with a small colony. Now the problem with this is it's great if you're, um, if, if you're um, harvesting your bees pretty quickly. But my, the way I like to do things myself personally at the moment, I'm not saying this won't change, is I feel that I would like to be able to have a little bit of leeway between when the queen starts laying and when I've got a harvester or when she starts swarming. The problem with these small boxes is that the queen can abscond very, very easily and within two or three weeks of laying she'll be gone. Boom. Well, the beauty of this system is I've gone for the deeper boxes, I'm utilising what I've got, I'm not wasting materials, all these are standard frames I bought in kit that I've cut down and milled the ends myself, pretty straightforward. Time consuming, yes, but hey, what else do you do this time of year? And I'm hoping that this will keep my colonies a little bit longer, and by doing that, I'm also getting more mature queens that I'm able to use in my other colonies. So by having a little bit of time, a little bit of time uh, I'm buying with, by making these boxes bigger, if I can get it right, I will have queens that are more mature, that might, more, that might be more readily accepted by another colony that's just had a queen substituted from it. So that's my kind of way of thinking. Just to, it was just to show you this, that um, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm making up ten, uh, five boxes of this for this year, maybe some more later in the year, but at the moment see how this works. And um, hopefully we'll have some good queens to requeen all my colonies. And then next year we'll be into having colonies and uh, with all, all queens from that were made this year, which is ideal because they do say the queen is strongest in her second year. Just to add, I didn't mention before that feeding. Um, feeding mini mating nukes, you obviously need to make sure your, your, your colony is well uh, fed during the time uh, your queen is out mating because when she's coming back she needs to be fed well by the workers. So you either need to use uh, a division board feeder, which I don't use at the moment because I I can't really make them uh, on my own, uh, well, under the, uh, the, the with the tools I've got. So I go for the option of using a uh, top feeder, which isn't prone to robbing because uh, it's actually enclosed within the lid. Other top feeders, uh, bees can get under the lid, but this one is different because it actually has a sealed bit inside. You put your sugar in here, and then uh, the bees come up from the hole inside and um, eat the sugar. So there you are. I can keep my bees totally fed the whole time. If it rains one, two or three days after I make up my mating nukes, I'm hoping that the bees will still be able to build out, to fill out, to, to take the stores and feed a, a young virgin queen until she mates successfully. And then obviously afterwards, but at least I'll be able to, 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 to keep, the, keep the colony fed. So I don't use the division board feeders, but in the future, it's something I might go to. It just depends on the materials I can find and if I can find uh, make a way of fitting them well into here. The problem I've got is actually when I harvest these um, when I harvest these nukes in the autumn, I'd like to try and overwinter them. Now, ideally, it, to overwinter them, what you what you need to do is remove the centre partition. First of all, harvest one side, use that somewhere, or, or combine it somewhere else, or, or use the queen, and then basically allow one queen to, to 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 then rule over the whole rest of the colony, so that she's got more resources for that winter. Because really. Trying to let your bees uh, overwinter in a, in a colony this small is going to be tricky. But that's something I've got to look into this summer. Something I've got to, got to work out what the best thing to do is. Because I haven't got division board feeders, I can't move the feeder from one end to the other and then have all the frames available. So, something I've got to work out. But it's, um, uh, you know, learning as you go, as they say. Anyway, as I said before, if you haven't made any nuke boxes yet, I suggest you go and make some. Because if you've got a couple of colonies, you will probably need a nuke or two this summer. Dead easy to make. Look on my blog. Look up the how to make a nuke box or how to make a dad on five frame nuke. It's actually listed in other listings on the internet. So if you just put that into Google or one of the search engines, you'll find it. It's dead easy to make. You will need it. Uh, nucleus boxes are one of the main key uh, elements of beekeeping. And once you learn to make a few, you'll realize how easy it is. Then you can start to collect a few and use them for your own resources. But anyway, I um, hope you enjoyed this little video. And um, if you like my uh, blog, uh, if you want to join, just click subscribe. And uh, I'll be doing other... If you look behind, there's all these lovely bottles over here waiting to be made into hornet traps. We've now got Asian hornet here. Um, last year, we destroyed some 200 nests in the region of the, the, the nearest large river between me and Dino. And uh, this year, we think it's going to be a major problem, but we have other issues with it as well. Anyway, I'll do a video on that in a couple of weeks on how to make hornet traps for all the people living in the UK who are going to need them. 
because there's no doubt the Horn, Asian Hornet is going to jump between the, the, the Kent coast and northern France. There's no doubt about that. But as and when it does and how it does it, we don't really know. But anyway, food for thought. I'll uh, update you on that later on. Anyway, take care. I hope you enjoyed the video.